Welcome to Class Noobs. I'm Maria Sidkovets, and I'm a technology brother in Silicon Valley. And in today's short class, we'll be learning what is Docker, how to use it, and how to manage your applications using Docker Compose. But first, let me introduce our new class pet, Dimples. Say hello world, Dimples. Let's start with an intro to the Docker platform. What is Docker? Docker is a set of platform as a service products. It packages your applications together with their dependencies, configuration files, and runtime environments into a portable Docker container. Docker works like virtual machines, but it has an even deeper level of virtualization. Unlike VMs, Docker containers share the same OS kernel. So Docker actually requires less resources compared to VMs. This leads us to why we even use Docker. Docker is a software that packages up the code and all of its dependencies so that the application can run quickly and reliably from any computing environment like a Mac OS or Windows computer. Docker containers are lightweight, flexible because most apps can be containerized using Docker, portable because it packages everything into a single container that you can deploy anywhere you want, and they are scalable, which means that if your app is receiving a large amount of fluctuating requests, you can scale up your number of containers and then when the number of requests drops, you can also scale down the number of containers too. Docker has two very important concepts, Docker images and Docker containers. A Docker image is an executable package that includes everything you need to run an application. It is defined by a Docker file and there's a Docker image registry called Docker Hub, which is similar to how we host code repositories on GitHub. On the other hand, a Docker container is a runtime instance of a Docker image. In other words, you can say it's a running process of your image. Another way to think about it is that a Docker image is like a class in object-oriented programming, and a container is an instance of that class. Now we're going to start using Docker, so make sure you have it installed, and all the instructions are in the description below. In the first part of today's class, we'll be learning the main Docker commands, so that you can pull an image and run it in a container. Here are some of the commands we'll be using. The naming of all these commands is very intuitive, so don't be overwhelmed by how many there are. The first thing we want to do is pull our Docker image. In the docker pull command, you have to specify the name of the image as well as its tag. We can then see a list of all of the images we have by using the docker images command. And now to run it, we use the docker run command and specify exactly which image we want to be run. Docker run means I want to create a container using the hello world image. Then we can use docker ps to list out all of our running containers. Why do I still have no containers listed even though we just ran one? Well, in this case, our container has already completed its task and printed out the information. But if we use docker ps a, it lists out all running containers. We can also easily remove our container by using its container ID. Now let's try to clone a repo cd into it and try to write our own docker image. A docker file is what's used to build an image. You can think of it as a set of commands that gets sent to the docker engine and it works its way from top to bottom and executes the commands on its way down. Every docker file has to have a from instruction and in this case we specify that the parent image is python at this specific tag. This is similar to how inheritance works in object-oriented programming. The run instruction will execute any new commands in a layer on top of the Docker image and commit the result. There can only be one command instruction in a Docker file. It provides defaults for an executing container. Now, before we can create a container, we need to build our image using the Docker build command. Dash T means to assign a tag to this Docker image. Everything, including the Docker file, is in this current directory, so we can just use a dot here to specify where to get the image from. And if we run Docker images right now, we can see that it was successfully created. We can now use the docker run command to run our container just like we did earlier. We use dash D for detached mode so that we can have the process running for a long time in the background. We also use dash P to map the port on the container with the same port on our local machine. A container has now been created and this is its ID. If we do docker ps now, we'll see our container is running. You can also run commands inside of your container using the docker exec command. And if you'd like to publish your image on docker hub, you can use the docker push command, similarly to how we do git push for github. So, 
Say that you have a website with two repos, one for the front end and one for the back end database that you'd like to run together. Well, luckily for you, you can use something called Docker Compose. Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. You use a YAML file to configure your application's services. Then with a single command, you can create and start all of the services in your configuration. There are three steps to use Docker Compose. The first is to prepare your Docker image by either pulling it from Docker Hub or creating one like we did earlier. The second is to define the services that make up your Docker Compose YAML so that they can be run together in an isolated environment. And the last step is to run Docker Compose up so that it can start your services and run the entire app. Let's practice this by cloning another repo that uses Python Flask and a Redis database. In the Docker Compose file, we define the first service as web, which points to our web image. We also define the container name as Flask. We want Docker Compose to automatically build the image for us. So in the build command, we specify the source repository of the image, which in our case is the web folder. Similarly to how we did it in the command line earlier, we use the ports command to expose the port 5000 on our Flask container and map it to port 5000 on our local machine. Then we define that the database service is going to be a dependency of our web service because it has to do some transactions with it. This tells Docker Compose which containers to build first. So the Flask container will not be built until the database one is. Then we define the database container to use Redis, which we pull from Docker Hub. Now, if we open a browser and head over to port 5000 on our local host and refresh the page, we will see that our app is now working. So the problem is that right now, if we make a change in our code, we're not gonna see it affected on our browser because we'll have to rebuild our container every time to see it affected. However, you can modify your YAML file to add a new volumes key, which mounts the project directory on the host to slash code inside the container to let you modify code on the fly. And in our case, we also have to set a new Flask environment variable to tell Flask to reload the code on change. So now if we update our app, the changes will be shown automatically. All right, noobs, that's all for today's class. I hope you learned the basics of Docker and Docker Compose and that you'll use them in your future projects. See you next class. Bye.